let's uh, resume our activities. It is my great pleasure to introduce Professor Jung Cheng Wei from University of British Columbia. Uh, Professor Wei has done many important contributions in, in elliptic equations, semilinear elliptic equations, free boundaries, phase transitions. So Professor Wei, it's a great pleasure to, to, to have you here. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the uh, organizers, Diego, uh, Adeguado, and uh, uh, Boyan, and uh, Luis uh, for the kind of invitation. And uh, it's my first time in to Brazil, and in particular to this place. It's a nice country, nice city, nice weather, nice lecture room, nice people. So <laughs> everything is nice, it's perfect. Uh, and I also thank everyone for staying so late uh, to my lecture. <laughs> so today I'm going to talk about some older problem, classical problem, uh, it's called a series over determinant problem. And then uh, discuss a conjecture by uh, Berstike and uh, Professor uh, Caffarelli and uh, Nuremberg. And this is a joint work with uh, Manuel De Pino, who is here, and uh, Frank Paka. And uh, another one is a joint work with uh, KNA Wang. So let me uh, start with the uh, uh, problem. So 1971, uh, uh, Seren considered the following so called uh, over determinant problem. OK, so let me write. So let omega be a bounded domain. Uh, so you consider this a self semilinear problem. And let's say u is positive and with Dirichlet boundary condition. So, uh, so this is a standard self-linear, uh, uh, self-linear elliptical problem. But now, not only you impose the Dirichlet boundary condition, you also impose the Neumann boundary condition. So this I call the problem S, the series over determinant problem. Yeah? So F is uh, any Lipschitz function, okay? Lipschitz function. So using the method of uh, uh, movement price, uh, Seren showed that uh, if omega is a bounded domain, then this must be, radius must be a, a ball, and U must be radius symmetric, so, so uh, it becomes a OD. Okay? So this is, a, uh, uh, this is a classical result by Seren. So let me reformulate this problem. Uh, instead of consider the problem, uh, we consider the problem is to find a domain. You, f you want to find a domain for which this solution has a solution. And the same result says, OK, the only bounded domain you can find are both. Okay, you don't have other domains. Okay? So, so actually, this is a problem of finding domains, extreme domains. Okay? So this, I, I reformed the same result in this way. So same result says, the only bounded domain is a ball. Actually, Seren's proof was uh, based on the so-called Alessandro of uh, reflection principle introduced in 1956 by Alessandro uh, uh, to prove the following famous result in geometry. So you take any compact uh, connected embedded hypersurface in Rn whose mean capture is a constant, so this is called a seamless surface, uh, seamless surface. And what the Alexander show that the only compact seamless surface is a ball, okay, is a Euclidean ball. So, uh, so Seren uh, has a clever insight in the, in the, in the over-determinant problem. Uh, and he proved uh, the, this re his result as an analog of uh, Alexandrov's. Uh, this is a ge geometric problem. But his insight is sort of philosophical. This is, this is uh, the idea, the method of the reflection. I use, now I use this method of reflection to do this problem. Okay? So what I want to do today is to further uh, explore the parallel between 
and startups and the service statement. So the question I want to answer uh, today is, is there a realistic link between these two problems? So, so this is a problem in, in seven linear. And this is a problem in uh, differential geometry. And okay, so can we is is can we can we establish a real link between these two uh, problems? And this is uh, what I'm going to discuss today. I want to show you that in fact there's a real link between these two problems. Okay. And in fact, this problem uh, series uh, overdetermined is. Uh, uh, Related to a problem is was started by Caffarelli, uh, by Rizzi Caffarelli Nimberg in 1997. So first of all, let me now discuss uh, uh, the some uh, related result. Uh, so of course, when, when the domain is bounded, everything is done. So we okay. So let's assume the domain is unbounded. Huh? So. Uh, if we don't have this f, okay, if this don't have this nonlinearity, then you are looking for how many functions okay, uh, with these two boundary conditions. So, so these kind of domains are called the exceptional domains, and uh, uh, the examples, and this function u is called the root function of the domain. And in fact, uh, in R2, you can find an example uh, of the domain, which is like, uh, uh, two uh, parabola uh, in between the two parabola. This is an example of uh, exception domain, and you can find that with corresponding u. Okay, you can compute the corresponding u. And in fact, uh, if f equals zero, if you don't have the nonlinearity, Trazard in 2014 gave a complete classification of two-dimensional domains, such domains. And then in for three-dimensional uh, problems, if we, we don't have this F, uh, Helen, uh, Houseways, and Pakar, they get the so called vast Charles representation for this kind of domains. So, this kind of domain behaves very much like a minimum surface. Okay? Very much like the exception domain, very much like minimum surface because now you can get the, the vast Charles representation yeah, in R3. But today, we are, I'm going to focus on case when F is non zero. Okay? So, we have a non linear, non -linear F. And, and also the domain is unbounded, okay? And for the purpose of my talk, uh, I'm going to take f of u to be uh, the famous uh, uncounted reality, okay? Uh, so I, I don't want to change my f, uh, uh, so let me just take this f u f, uh, so-called uncounted reality. In fact, all the results uh, of uh, uh, this talk are true as long as the following holds. So what we need is, is you solve this uh, first order ODE, uh, this second order ODE in the half space from zero to infinity. So you prescribe boundary condition Okay, initial condition. Uh, so you look for look at this uh, this one. What you want? What the condition we want is that there is a solution like this. Okay, goes to a constant at the infinity. Okay? Goes to a constant at the infinity. So that's that's the the condition we want. Okay, we want I I so W of t here. Uh, this is a t. So we want to have. Uh, I, I owe this solution which starts from zero and it goes to some constant. Okay, that, that's the only condition. That's the condition we, we want. So for example, you can not you can take a u minus u square. Okay, this is called a KPP fascia like you, it also works. And u minus u cube, u minus u four, u minus u two to p, any p, you will work. Right? But for the sake of my talk. In this talk, I will just take uh, u minus u to the cube. Okay? This is an uh, unaccounted. 
Okay, so in 1997, uh, Bersticke, Cafferelli, Nienberg, in the uh, C prime paper, they, at the end of the paper, they visited the following conjecture. In fact, they started this problem uh, in, uh, when, when the omega is unbounded, I'll mention the results uh, later. And then there is uh, the fully uh, conjecture uh, at the end of the paper. And they say that, so let me, This is, suppose uh, the, this, this problem has a solution, okay? Suppose this problem has a solution uh, for some domain, okay? And uh, let's assume that the domain, the complement domain is connected. And S has a solution. Okay. Then, what kind of domains can you have? So, so the context is the domain is either a ball, of course this is the boundary case, uh, or half space, I'm going to discuss uh, later, uh, the half space, or a generalized cylinder, which is BK, R to the M minus K. So this is, uh, for example, in dimension three, uh, you have this, uh, this uh, cylinder, okay? Uh, or complement of a ball or cylinder. For example, in dimension three, the complement can also be the domain. Right? It's, it's connected. It's connected. So, so this is the, the conjecture. So, so, so for example, if a domain is unbounded, so the conjecture says there are three types, half space, cylinder, or exterior uh, complement of a ball or, or cylinder. Okay? So this, are the, this is the uh, I call it BCN conjecture, by Stike, uh, Kafferelli, Nienberger conjecture. So, let me first discuss uh, the second, because the first case, the one guy is bounded. So, of course, now, uh, we, uh, uh, let's be discuss the, the second case, uh, the half space. So, what are the, what are possible half space? Uh, so, in fact, in the, in the, in the paper in the 1997, Bersicke, Cafferelli, Nuremberg paper, uh, they, they, uh, the original paper, they mainly concerned the so-called epigraph case, okay? So, so this is uh, what we call uh, epigraph, means that it's a graph. So our omega can be written as uh, uh, xn greater than some function, say locally uh, smooth function. So you're looking for solutions in the half space, and u equals zero here, equals constant here, and here this is xn equals some phi of x prime. Five. So this I call the epigraph. So, uh, so uh, if with this notation, this is the uh, the series uh, uh, problem uh, uh, in this form. Uh, this uh, obvious solution: if phi equals zero, this is called half space, right? If phi equals zero, this is half space. In the in this case, the we have. A uh, one dimension solution, the ODE solution. Right? You just take uh, U to be W of Xn. Right? And this is, this is a solution. And uh, even in the Alan case, it's just a tangent hyperbolic Xn over square two. Okay? So this is a, 
uh, uh, obvious solution. Uh, another one is uh, you, you take uh, phi to be a linear function. So you, you, you t shift your, your plane, okay? You rotate your plane. Yeah, in this case, you can also find your solution. There's a solution like this. So the question is, are these are the only solutions? So this I call the basically uh, covariate linear conjecture for epigraph. So up to a rigid motions, of course, you have to allow rotation and the translation. After rigid motions, the epigraph is a half space, and the U depends on one direction only. Okay, it's OD. So, so this is uh, the BC conjecture for epigraph. Phi, in other words, phi is a linear function, and u is depends on one five only. One five. So this is the biostatistic covariate linear condition for the epigraph. Okay. So. Uh, so I was first tell you what ha happened to this conjecture, okay? Then I will give you. Then I will discuss the general case, okay? And it turns out this one is more interesting uh, than the general case. So let me now start with this conjecture first, the epigraph case. And in the 1997, Bellstiki, Kafferani, Nimberg show that uh, this is true. Uh, if phi satisfies this condition. So which means isentotically is like constant. So it's, this is called isentotically constant uh, uh, functions. Okay? So, so in this case, of course, phi will be a constant, will be b, okay? Uh, will be a constant. So in this case, they show that this is true. The, uh, uh, phi must be a constant, and so this is a half space, and the u depends on the, uh, uh, one direction only. And in the general case, uh, there are only a few results, puzzle results. And in the 2010, Farina and the they show that in dimension two and three, if the graph is globally Lipschitz. Okay, so if gradient phi is globally bounded, then they show that uh, in these two dimensions, two and three, the result is true. Okay, so the question is, is this is this a true in general case in, for all dimensions or or, or other, what are the and uh, uh, what what are the borderline uh, dimensions? Okay. So uh, this year with uh, my uh, collaborator Kenny Wang. Uh, we look at this problem again, okay, and we prove the following result. So we show that the, the conjecture is true if in dimension two. So in dimension two, we don't need any condition, okay? For any phi, okay, uh, for any dimension, for, uh, for any phi, is, is, it must be a half space in dimension two, okay? And if phi is globally Lipschitz, as in the case of Farina Vanellochi, then it's true for any n, for any dimension, okay? There's no dimension restriction. Now, if phi is coercive, so meaning that is, this is the one case, so, in both n, it goes to infinity, goes to plus infinity. If phi is coercive, like this case, then it's also true. Because in this case, we can show there are no solutions. Simply, there are just no solutions. So the solution set is empty, whatever you say is true. Right? <laughs> okay? So, so, so these are the uh, these, uh, three results 
is the okay uh based low conditions based on the low conditions but in dimension three and eight we need a condition okay we need we need a condition that u satisfies the monotonicity condition and uh, 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 u is monotone in the last fiber okay so let me uh So this is our result. So this is true for n equals two, and true for phi uh, global Lipschitz is true for phi progressive. And it's true for dimension n between three and eight, and provided it's monotone in the last fiber. Okay, monotone in the last fiber. So what is this? Uh, so I need to discuss two things. First, the dimension eight. Why we have a dimension eight? As I'm going to uh, show you uh, later, a uh, little bit later. But let me first discuss this condition. The monotonicity condition. So I call this as a natural monotonicity condition. Uh, in this case, in dimension three to eight, uh, we we'll ask this condition, and this condition is natural because in the original paper of Bevstiky, Kafferelli, and Nienberg, they show that this holds. Okay, this can this monotonicity holds if phi is globally Lipschitz. Okay. Or phi is corrosive. So, so you expect that this should hold for any for for any phi. But at this moment, we, at this moment, we don't know how to prove this. So, but at least in the global Lipschitz case or corrosive case, this is true. Okay, this has been proved in the very sticky coverage uh, Nimberger paper. Okay, so this is uh, uh, our uh, positive result. And so we basically we show that up to dimension eight is true, okay? And except this additional assumption between three and eight, okay? This is a natural assumption. And it turns out that this dimension eight uh, is optimal, okay? This eight is optimal. Uh, in fact, uh, last year, with uh, Manuel Dapilo and uh, Frank Pakar, we show that for dimension n greater than nine, there is a solution to the Severin's problem uh, on an entire epigraph, which is not a half space. So you, you have a counter example, of course, uh, and this graph is not Lipschitz, of course, not Lipschitz, and as I'm going to discuss this graph uh, a little bit later. Okay? So, so this shows that for dimension None or higher, that is no longer true. Okay. So, uh, so at this moment, I want to. Uh, so, now we see that somehow this conjecture, the basic covering number conjecture, this uh, is very much similar to the another famous conjecture. This is called the De George conjecture. Uh, this is, uh, of course, more famous. Uh, 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 and well known, uh, okay. And in the De Georgi conjecture in 1978, and so he's asked for the if you look at the Allen Kahn equation in the whole space, say which is monotone in one direction, then the conjecture says at least when dimension n less than equal to eight, all solutions are one dimension. All solutions one dimension. So in this Conjecture, he already specified the dimension, your dimension eight, okay? Uh, uh, so, and, and this conjecture has generated a lot of interest, uh, and uh, is, uh, in the last 20 years, this has been almost uh, completely solved. For example, in dimension two by Gusup and Gray, and dimension three by Ambrosio and Cabaret, and uh, uh, 
Professor Jefferson and Monell in, in 2004, they uh, uh, discussed a possible approach to counter example in high dimensions. And if the left set is uh, globally Lipschitz, is, uh, if u equals zero, then this left set is a global Lipschitz graph, Caffarelli and Cordova prove that it is true. Okay. It's, uh, it's one dimension. And then for dimension four to eight, Savin, uh, in 2009, in the uh, Anna's paper, he proved the result. But and this assumption, additional assumption, so this is not monotonicity, but about the limit. As the limit, uh, as x n goes to plus or minus infinity, the limit must be a constant, okay? Pointwise limit, not a uniform limit. And uh, last year, there's a new proof by uh, my collaborator, Kenneth Wang, uh, uh, about Savin's result. So, uh, uh, so this is a, a geometric, well, geometric measure theory proof. Uh, and in dimension n greater than 9, uh, with the manual dependent and uh, microcrossing, we prove that uh, this is not true. Okay? So you see that the, the, this, uh, the Jewish conjecture dimension 8 and the 9, uh, uh, and the Bersiga covering the number conjecture, they are uh, very much analog to each other. So now we understand that this, this is the, of course, this is a more difficult Dijewski type of conjecture for, for, for series over determinant problem. Okay. Uh, uh, so, uh, so in dimension three to eight, we, uh, we ask this condition. So this is like a Savin's condition, uh, the additional condition for dimension four to eight. So, uh, so this is uh, the basic covering number conjecture for every graph. Uh, so, we, so there's a dimension restriction to eight. After eight, we may, it's true, okay, almost true, and beyond eight is not true. Uh, so, what about the, the original the basic uh, covering number conjecture for general domain? Okay, for general case. Right? So. Uh, actually, uh, after we post our paper, and one month later, uh, Antonio Ross, uh, David Reyes, and uh, Sig Bardi, uh, they post a paper on the archive. They show that in dimension two, the general basic covering conjecture is true. Okay? Not just for every graph. Okay? For any unbounded domain, the complement is connected, then they show it must be a graph and it must be the half, the half space. Okay. So, the, so, so this, so, and for, for any Lipschitz F, okay. any Lipschitz F. So, they, so for the general uh, basic covering the number conjecture, in general cases, uh, uh, this has been, in dimension two, this is completely solved, okay. completely solved. So, what about the higher dimension, three or higher? Uh, surprisingly, it's, it's false in three or higher. Uh, in the, for the general case, it's three or higher. Uh, so, uh, so let me uh, discuss, I can't think, there are many kind of examples, okay? But uh, let me discuss one kind of example which follow in the same line as our proof of the kind of example for the epigraph, okay? So, let me describe uh, 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 the epigraph in theorem two, and then I will discuss the counter example in the general case. Okay. So theorem two, we say that for n greater than nine, the ASI solution uh, to the seventh problem uh, on every graph. So what is the every graph? What is the graph? And in fact, this graph is nothing but minimum graph. Okay. So what is a minimum graph? So min, uh, minimum graph is, is a, a surface like this, okay, with x n equals f of x prime, where f satisfies uh, this nonlinear uh, 
uh, mean, uh, uh, mean capture equation. Okay, this is nonlinear equation. This is minimum surface equation. So, uh, so if if you have f with surface this condition, then this is called a minimum graph. Okay. Of course, constant surface the, con the equation and also linear functions, right? And fine functions satisfy the condition. So the question, the classical question uh, of Bernstein is, are all solutions of this problem uh, just linear functions, okay? And fine functions. Uh, and this, of course, this is a, a classical subject has been uh, completely solved in the uh, last uh, century uh, in the 60s from uh, 65 to 68 is completely solved up to dimension 8. And then uh, in dimension 9, you have a counterexample by Bambea, uh, Di Giorgi, and uh, Giusti on the counterexample. Okay? So let me discuss uh, the counterexample. Uh, so you take uh, n equals 9. Okay, you want to solve this, find a long trivial solution for this problem, uh, minimum graph equation. So, and so then the underlying dimension is R8 because M minus one. So what do you do? M minus one, eight is an even number. And in fact, in Chinese culture, it's a lack number. <laughs> so my technical number, I have a lot of eights. Eight, okay. Eight is a lack number. Uh, and it was a lack number for the minimum graph. Uh, so what do you do? You divide the R8 into R4, R4. Yeah, four is unlucky. <laughs> <laughs> so, and you want to look for solutions, read the submission, but not, you cannot look for solutions, read the submission in the whole eight variable, but you look for solutions, read the submission in the two, two four, uh, four dimensional variable, okay? So you reduce the problem to two dimension. And furthermore, you ask that, it finishes on so-called Simon's cone. Okay. And since we only have two variables, you use a polar coordinate, okay? So you use a polar coordinate, and, and then you look for solutions that are separate variables, right? This is uh, with, with, when we teach uh, ODE we, or PDE, the first thing we do is measure of separation variable. Here we do measure of separation variable. Right? They take R to some power times a function of theta. And then you plug in the equation. Of course, it's a complete nonlinear equation, but you have to drop sometimes, like the one. You drop the one, and you get uh, this equation. And then you plug in this form uh, into this equation, and it becomes a second order ODE. And for this second order ODE, uh, Bambea did juicy show that you do have a solution. There is a solution uh, that satisfies your requirement, okay, your conditions. And then started from this uh, solution, you do sub and super solution method and to find a true solution for the nonlinear problem. Okay. And in fact, uh, uh, in the counter example we construct, I construct with uh, Manel and Mike, uh, we show that the construction of uh, but actually we have a more precise uh, estimate for the F, okay? So the difference between the true solution and, and the uh, approximate solution. In fact, the difference is huge. It's what, this is R cube, but this is uh, R to the minus sigma, okay? Uh, and in fact, recently, actually, last year we showed, actually we can prove to R to minus one. Uh, this, this is uh, 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 quite a complicated problem. Right? But with this, it will be good enough for, for all the computations, as I'm going to show you later. So now, the, the second thing, the counter example, what is the counter example? The epigraph, what, you do, what we do is we take the BDG graph, the Bombay digital juicy graph, and we rescale. We take a large, okay? Take a large BDG graph. This is still a minimum surface. We'll take a wonderful Epsom, okay? And then our, solu our, our graph is almost close, order one close to this, uh, to this new graph, okay? 
So, 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 so this is the BDG graph. Okay, this is the BDG graph, and our our graph is almost the 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 phi. This is phi. It's almost all the one close uh, to this graph. All the one close to this graph. So, so this theorem, is, uh, uh, this theorem, uh, uh, this uh, kind of example shows that somehow there's a connection between the epigraph and the minimum graph, okay, in differential geometry. Uh, so, in fact, this uh, the proof in the in the second theorem applies more generally, not just for graphs, minimum graphs, but for any, okay, minimum embedded minimum surface, in fact, same surface, okay? So, provided that we know sufficient information about the minimum surface or same surface, okay? So, I will say two results in this direction. Uh, for example, in R3, you have many, many minimum surfaces, okay? Uh, uh, Let's take any a complete embedded uh, minimum surface with finite total, total curvature in R3, and which is non-degenerate. So non-degenerate means that if you look at the Jacobi operator, the only kernel, bounded kernel for the Jacobi operator are rigid motions, are, are translations and rotations. Okay, so these are called non-degeneracy. So what, if you have a non-degenerate uh, minimum surface in R3, then you have then this minimum surface will divide the domain into two, right? Into two domains. And in any of these domain, you can construct your same problem has a solution. Okay? Same problem has a solution. So for example, let's take the catenoid. Catenoid, so we take the warm guard just to be inside. You have to, so the catenoid divide out into two two parts, right? The inside and out. You can take either one. Let's take the inside, then we found a solution, the same as the problem, uh, found, uh, found, we found a, a solution U, which solves, same as, solves love zero plus F U inside here, and on the boundary, U equals zero, and on the boundary, the normal derivative is also constant. Okay. So this is uh, uh, the catenary, for example. And this is the most famous, uh, 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 surface, uh, minimum surface after the category. Like, uh, this is a coastal surface, and I think it was produced here <laughs> in 81. Uh, yeah. And uh, so in his thesis, uh, this is a thesis, a PhD thesis, so he constructed this uh, uh, minimum surface, okay? This is the first uh, minimum surface beyond the coastal surface, beyond the category, okay? This is a so coastal surface. So for this cross surface, you also divide the domain into two parts, and then we can, in either part of the domain, you have seven problem has a solution. Okay? So this is for the minimum surface. Uh, on the other hand, we can uh, I have a similar statement uh, for general, for seams, so not just a minimum surface, same surface. For example, so the, the Example, same surface like balls, cylinder, we already, we know. And the, the loudest surface. Well, this is a, the, the loudest surface, which is like a perturbation of the cylinder, but uh, uh, with uh, periodic. It's a revolution, uh, a surface of revolution is a periodic surface, and with some parameter tau. So this is the loudest surface. And for this, the loudest surface, we also show that uh, the service, this problem has a solution inside, inside the domain, okay, has a solution. So, so this result actually shows us, actually answers the first question I stated in my, in the first uh, slide. Uh, so there is a connection, a realistic connection between series over different problem and constant mean capture surface. And this is the real, the realistic con connection. And what we show, in general, gave any, as long as non-degenerate, non-degenerate embedded the same surface, same uh, 
over the total problem has a solution. So this is uh, okay. So this answers the technique between the surface surface and surface over determined problem. So uh, the last two theorem uh, give a sort of counter example to the Bernstein covariate uh, liver conjecture in dimension uh, three, for example, dimension three, because the the catenoid. Uh, we build a solution inside the catenoid. Uh, of course, the catenoid is not a cylinder or, or exterior domain or this. No, it's not in one of uh, uh, these domains. Okay. So, uh, and at this moment, I actually, I don't know how to, okay, after all this context, we don't know how, how to raise the conjecture in the general case. Uh, how do we, what should be the, the right conjecture in the general case? Uh, I don't know how to uh, 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 raise the, 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 the conjecture. So, so let me summarize uh, rise what we have discussed. So we show that for the basic covariate liberal conjecture, uh, for the epigraph, okay, is true for dimension two, uh, conditionally true uh, for dimension three to eight, and the fourth for dimension n uh, greater than nine. And uh, for general unbounded domains, it's true for dimension two and the fourth uh, for dimension n greater than three. So this is the, uh, uh, the, the, the basic covering liberal conjecture in either case, okay? Epigraph or general domain. So in the remaining time, I'm going to discuss how to prove uh, theorem one, and theorem two. Okay. So, so uh, let's uh, consider the series problem on the epigraph. Okay. So with this uh, constant on the epigraph, and the question is, how can we re how how can we uh, uh, build a connection between this conjecture, basic covering liberal conjecture, and the Georgian conjecture? What is the connection here? Okay. So first of all, this problem, this is an overdetermined problem. So you don't see a vibration structure because it's overdetermined. You sort of overdetermined. Okay. And on the other hand, the Georgia conjecture, the other kind of equation has a vibration structure. And this one, the is is overdetermined. You don't have a vibration structure. So our key observation. Actually, uh, this observation came uh, after, after I did work with Manuel and Frank. We, I found uh, we, oh, the, the, this constant C somehow is not, uh, is not arbitrary. In our construction, the constant C is the, one, is the OD constant C. It must be the OD constant C. Okay? And it's, it's the constant C. So, so our first uh, key observation is that uh, in, the, in the case of uh, epigraph, okay, if we have an epigraph, uh, okay, like this, okay, xn equals uh, phi x prime. So you want u equals zero here. And remember, as I said in the, I assume that I, we have a one dimension solution starting from zero. And this is uh, the derivative is double prime of zero. Uh, double prime of zero, okay? And so what uh, we found out is that in, if you have every graph, okay? If you have every graph, this constant C cannot be arbitrary. Okay? And we show that this constant C must be the one dimensional constant C. The corresponding one dimensional constant C. Okay? Which is this is a double prime of zero. It's a minus double prime of zero, which is this. So in other cases it's not true, but for, for every graph, the constant C, okay, is completely determined 
by f. Okay? Completely determined by f. So how to prove this? Okay, Be and because the, the boundary, the, the normal data is constant. Right? So as long as if I, I can put a big ball inside or outside, if I touch, I get a lower or upper bound on C. So if I can make my ball large enough, okay, so I, if I, I can compare my solution here uh, with the solution in a ball, in a big ball, and I know that as the radius of the ball go to infinity, the, the boundary, the derivative must go to this one dimension derivative. So if I, as long as I can put big balls inside or outside, then uh, I get a lower and upper bound on the constant C. And, and that my ball go to infinity, so I get the constant C. It must be the one dimensional constant C. Yeah. So this is the key observation. So once we have this observation, then uh, so the surface is probably overdetermined for epigraph. Actually, you must solve this. Okay. So on the boundary, the gradient u must be this, must be one dimension. And what is this? This is the ordinary Lagrange equation, the one phase free boundary problem. One phase free boundary problem. So we do have a five-dimensional structure now. And this is a one phase free boundary problem. And there are many, many experts in this audience here. And uh, uh, so this is a free boundary problem, one phase free boundary problem. And we have an energy function now. Okay. So, so once we have this, OK, uh, uh, if, and with, if we assume monotonicity, if we have a monotonicity, in fact, we can show that the series over the problem from the solution is actually a global minimizer. Not just a stationary solution, it's a global minimizer. So the monotonicity, we need this monotonicity condition in order to show it's a global minimizer. Once it's a global minimizer, we can use all the tools in, in geometric measure theory, in calculus variation, in free boundary, in all this to, to prove our result. So, uh, uh, so it, for this uh, one phase free boundary problem, uh, we have, for example, Monica estimates, uh, you, the usual Monica estimates. We can also have the monotonicity formula. Okay, after we have the Monica estimates, we have a monotonicity formula. And for global minimizers, uh, we can show we have the right energy bound, which is R to the n minus 1 the right energy bound. So with this, we're in a similar, similar situation of the George's conjecture. So the connection between the, the biostic recovery level conjecture and the George's conjecture is this observation. You show the boundary data is not arbitrary. It's a one dimension one, okay? So then you have a five-dimensional structure, okay? And it's like, and the five-dimensional, it's like the other kind, but except for this, uh, uh, so this is a cut of uh, this uh, function, okay? except for this. So this is a one phase free boundary problem. So, so what about uh, uh, dimension two? Okay, in dimension two, I don't assume we don't assume any con condition. Right? In dimension two, we uh, it's true. We prove it's true for for any fact. So, so the key to prove uh, this conjecture uh, in dimension two without requiring the minimality of the energy is this. You need to get the right energy bound. Right? So in this case, we need the bound to be C times R, okay? because A is two. So you need the C times R. You need this bound. And then you can do all the uh, analysis. So in R2, we can achieve this because by the classical result of uh, Kafferelli, Cardova in uh, 2006, the Monica estimates actually give you some information on the level set. So the Monica estimates implies that this set, the level set, is a mean conference set. Actually, it's a mean conference set. Now, in two dimensions, mean com there's only one capture. So mean, conf mean conference is convex. So, so, so this set is actually a convex set. 
So this function phi is concave because we are, our normal is out, it's out of normal. Okay. So if we use this new information uh, and the result of a Cavalli Cordova, then we can prove the energy bound in dimension two. Uh, so first, we integrate uh, uh, the equation in the in a in a ball. We integrate the equation in, in a in a in a ball and using the the Lipschitz bound, okay, and we get we get a bound for the for the integral f of u. But f of u and and the, and the is a uh, uh, big f of u. They're comparable if u is uh, away from zero, right? Because big f of u. One of four, one minus u square, and f of u is u times one minus u square. So, so for u uh, away from zero, for u away from zero, we just integrate the equation and we get the bound. Okay. Now, for u, so this is u equals gamma. For u between zero and gamma. We use the convexity because we have the convexity, and so and uh, and you and in fact uh, the Bernstein covariant Nibbuk she already showed that this set must be not order one distance from the boundary, must be order one distance from the boundary. So and then by the convexity you show that the intersection between this ball and this set. Uh, is is R okay, and so with this you get a, uh, you get the right bound for F, and then by modical estimate you get the bound for the energy, for E, okay, and so in dimension two, we just use the modical estimate we get the the right energy bound, then we get the uh, uh, we can now uh, uh, in a similar solution in the high, uh, higher dimensional case. Now in dimension uh, three to eight, we use this actual condition uh, to show that the solution is a global minimizer. Uh, so this is uh, like global minimizer in the sense uh, the, in the so that uh, Professor Tora discussed uh, the other day is uh, approximate minimizer. This is a global minimizer. This is a minimizer. If we have this condition, we have a minimizer, and then we have this energy bound, and then we do a blue down analysis. To get a minimum graph, and so we can uh, cover up to dimension eight, up to dimension eight. So, so this is uh, uh, the proof of uh, the first theorem. So, so in the proof of the first theorem, the first k property we use we prove is to show the boundary data is given to the one dimension boundary data, and then we use uh, monotonicity. To show global minimizer, and in dimension two we use modica estimates. Uh, so this is uh, the theorem one. Uh, so what about theorem two? So if in dimension nine, so we can just construct a solution in dimension nine, then it's true for all other high dimensions. So in dimension nine, uh, we want to construct a epigraph. Which is not, of course, not Lipschitz, and and which is close to the uh, minimum graph, uh, for which the series problem over dimension has a solution, and we prove this by the so-called GUI method, the infinite dimensional GUI method. So, so what are the new uh, ingredients uh, for this uh, 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 for this uh, 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 over determinable problem? First, if we look at the issue, if we look at the issue of at issue of this uh, point, if we blob, we should say a half space. Okay, we say half space. So now the linearized problem for the half space problem is an overdetermined Cauchy problem for elliptic problem. So, so this is uh, the linearized operator, and you prescribe. Uh, the differentiated boundary condition, of course, is zero, and the Neumann boundary condition also be prescribed. Why? Because you get some noise. Right? 
So this noise has to be corrected. So, so what you are, we are doing, we need to solve a Cauchy problem for elliptic problem over determined. So for elliptic equation, we need to prescribe both differential data and the boundary data. And we know that in general, this you cannot do this. Uh, in general, this. Uh, uh, so what we do is uh, we use some, we, uh, we need to put some parameter on the right hand side. Uh, if you have the right parameter, then this will, we show that this problem can be solved. So otherwise, I gave uh, the beta, gave the boundary division of Neumann, I can find the right hand side and then I found a solution for fun. So, so, so this is a over-determined Cauchy problem for the linearized operator. Now, the second ingredient is the reduced problem if we, we need to adjust the BDG graph. So, unlike the DeGeorge conjecture, the, the, the Arlington case in the whole space, we only have, we need to only to adjust that the, uh, the graph, the right hand side is one of our cube. But now, we need to reduce, we need to adjust the, the minimum graph with the right hand side with all slow decaying source, like one of our square, one of our cube, and one of our four. So, and this is a huge problem for us because we know the Jacob operator is not uh, the initial root is r minus two, r minus three, and in, so so you can only you can have a super solution if the if this is a one of out to the four plus something, you can solve the problem by sub and super solution, but all the error we get are slow decay. Okay, so we need to develop a new theory for the Jacob wafer with the right hand side, which is slow decay, and this. We have a lot of computation. We have to find exact form of the error and then do all the computation from the explicit uh, uh, H1, H2, H, uh, this H1, H2, and H3. And uh, okay, I think uh, my time is up. I, I stop here. Okay, thank you. <laughs>